Hi, I'm Pete Van Gaden, President of the Federation of Fly Fishers. You know, uh, it's amazing with the number of people who've come together that so seem to be inspired by not just this activity, but trying to bring all the aspects of, of uh, fish and wildlife together. And I know you as president of the FFF uh, has some specific goals in mind. Uh, could you share a little of that with us? Well, <clears throat> we're of course involved in all fish, all waters, as you know, and so you know we're working on, on conservation issues all over the country. One of our main thrusts is education. And so we're teaching the youth. We're losing a lot of uh, potential fishermen. If we lose uh, great numbers, we won't have a constituency and we'll lose more battles than we do today. So education is something that's very important to us. And then the uh, associations with other organizations to create something like we're creating here on the, on the Madison River is very exciting. And I think it's a good time in, uh, in the history of our country. People are beginning to really appreciate uh, the necessity of open wild space and the rivers that go with it and so on. So it's a, it's a good time. It's a tough time, but it's a good time. Well, then, is it possible uh, to uh, over-impact uh, our, our, our wildlife, our, our rivers and streams by just numbers of people? Or is it going to be possible over the next few years to, to, to monitor it correctly and not control it, but to at least preserve it uh, in regards to uh, uh, the health and, and the welfare of, of our streams and rivers? Is it possible? Yes. Can we do it? We can do it. And it's a matter of whether we have the, uh, the intestinal fortitude and the money and the desire we're going to have more people on less water. Uh, that's a fact of life. Access is a critical issue. But uh, I'm amazed at how much pressure a river like the Madison or the Yellowstone or go back to the Catskills, wherever you want to talk about, it, can take if it's if it's monitored carefully, well regulated, and the kill pressure is not too great. And I think hook and release is something that we've always promoted. But as you and I were chatting a little while ago, it's nothing wrong with taking a fish or two for the frying pan. And, a lot of streams can stand that, some can, where the regulators tell us that uh, we got to do all hook and release, then, then that's what we have to do. So it is possible to, to continue promoting catch and release in, in most of the waters and not undermine the strength of the fishery? When you can over stress fish, you can over catch them. I mean, you see in some popular spots, you'll see uh, fish that really have quite a bit of mouth damage. They're still in, the bodies are in, uh, healthy and so on, but I mean, that's, uh, that tells you that you're probably doing too much. Uh, I, I sometimes feel like we should do a better job educating and teaching the intricacies of fishing, whether it's worm fishing or whether it's, uh, whether it's fishing uh, with, with a fly rod. I think that's, a, you know, that's one of the good things I think about fly fishing, um, and the fact that you have to become a pretty good entomologist and you need to learn about uh, the, the natural cycles and when things hatch and, and what the fish are feeding on. And in order to become a really good fly fisher, you need to learn a lot about the stream. And so one of the things that we do in the Federation is we teach uh, not just casting and tying and rod building, but we teach stream entomology. We also teach angling ethics. And uh, there's a lot to be taught there, especially as more and more of us use uh, less and less water. Come around the bend and somebody's fishing a pool, or you're just going to have to sit down and, uh, you know, kind of give that person a wave and say, go ahead, you know, wait, I'll sit down here and, uh, and watch you, or, or circle around and give them some space. As we well know, a lot of times people don't do that. The thing that I'm seeing here in Montana on the Madison River is that this has become sort of the stamp of what not only can be done, but what should be done in other states all, all over North America uh, and uh, maybe all over the world. Well, I think that, you know, what's happening here is uh, it is a model. And I think uh, some people, somebody called me one day and said, uh, well, the Madison, how's America's uh, trout stream doing? Uh, right. They wanted somebody from another state and he wanted to how the fishing was. But I think the Madison really uh, can codify in that way. Uh, so protecting this, yes, it can be a model, and, and we're working on, what have we got, 13 miles of it now. Uh, the slide-in hopefully is going to become a centerpiece for uh, fly fishing in the United States. Uh, um, we got 55 miles to go on this river, uh, and we're working on the Yellowstone in the same way. And Outfits like the Trust for Public Land, Nature Conservancy, the various land trusts, uh, gaining conservation easements and gaining access uh, critically important and working together with those organizations 
hopefully this can be a model. Well, I know uh, uh, Trout Unlimited uh, has, has paid, uh, played a major role in my education. Mm -hmm. And I know that not only just the rivers, but we look behind us here and we see little uh, streams like this and little tributaries, and whether it's a vernal pool or whether it's a running stream, uh, we see places like this that really do, do need to be protected. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons that all the fingerlings finally get into the streams absolutely and turn into be big brown trout and we have that wonderful problem of western water law which we have to work on too but uh -huh. uh, you're absolutely right there i mean the whole watershed from the top of that hill to the top of that one over there we've got to take care of it and uh, you know the awareness is coming it really is and uh, I, I get optimistic at times well one of the things that we need to do is to talk to all of our political people and try to get uh, a good education uh, into all of our schools, whether it be K all the way up to university, and start talking about our water issues and the importance of educating young people to help us preserve this over the next 20 years. Thanks. That's an amen. You bet. <laughs>